and the monkey's off your back. Kick the habit. Puffs. Puffs are softer when you wake up, softer when you blow, softer when you're sneezing or when you're on the go. Puffs are made to be softer, to be nicer to your nose. Puffs, with softer fibers outside and strong ones inside. So puffs are softer than the leading brands. Strong. All this week, bar traveling man Neil Bubble Zerker as he hits the road to check out some of the most popular places and destinations we'll be going this summer, all to the north of Lake Erie. They call this the longest unguarded border in the world. Getting into Canada can be as easy as just stopping at the border, answering a couple of questions, and you're on your way. But they could require you to prove your citizenship, so it might be a good idea to carry along your birth certificate. And remember, it is a foreign country, and there are rules and regulations up here that you have to follow. It might be a good idea to get a copy of this travel information form that's available from the Canadian consulate. It'll tell you everything you need to know about coming to Canada. So once you're through the border, the next question is where to go. And a great place to make your first stop is at one of these handy Ontario travel information centers, operated by the Canadian government. And we will route them anywhere in the province, uh, offer our publications on uh, various things to do, accommodations, campgrounds, various activities in the province. And we also have the racks of brochures, which they can help themselves to. This is all free? This is all free, as well as travel counseling. No, not a penny. While you're here, make a stop at the money exchange and convert your American cash into Canadian funds. While most Canadian businesses will take American money, you may not always get the best exchange rate that you'll get here or at a bank. Oh, and one more thing you might want to pick up at the stop. That's one of these Ontario sales tax refund forms. What it means is if you save all your receipts while you're up here, when the things you buy, when you get back home, if you meet certain requirements, you can send them all back to Ontario, and they'll refund the 8% sales tax they charge here, as well as perhaps the 5% accommodations tax you pay at hotels and motels. Just one more way to make your money go a bit farther while you're visiting Canada. We're headed for what the Auto Club says is the second most popular destination in Canada for Northeast Ohioans, the honeymoon capital of the world, Niagara Falls. Just about every adjective in the dictionary has been used to describe the majesty of these falls. It is, without a doubt, one of the wonders of the world. Even in late spring, ice formations still fill the gorge, adding to the spectacle. And yes, you can still get a honeymoon certificate at the local Chamber of Commerce. And yes, a lot of folks still come here to spend their honeymoon. How do the local folks spot them? New shoes. New shoes. They've got new shoes for the wedding. and. Uh, and the rings, the rings are a lot shinier. It's views like this that make Michael's Inn by the Falls one of the favorites of the lovers who come here. The suites range from the exotic, like the Garden of Paradise with its jungle pool made of fiberglass rocks and lava, to the simple elegance of the Oriental Suite with its delicate taste and artistry. Right. <laughs> what would a Niagara Falls honeymoon hotel be without a jacuzzi built for two? Unfortunately, I'm alone. If you'd like to get into the swim here to enjoy one of these special rooms, make your reservations as soon as possible, especially for weekends in the summertime. And they should put a no vacancy sign up on the city sign because it's, it'll be booked from Buffalo to Toronto. As for other things to do around the falls, there is the Niagara Falls Museum, the oldest such establishment in North America. Inside, you'll find such things as the actual barrels used by those seeking fame by riding the barrels over the falls and living to tell about it. Some did, and some did not. There's also this little corner where you can at least imagine what it must be like. The glittery facade of Niagara Falls that some people love and other people hate comes alive at night on Clifton Hill. You can visit such places as the Elvis Presley Museum. Like I said, later on in uh, years, his suit became a little more elaborate. This was a little settled compared to some of the ones you will see <laughs> along the way. way. Yes. But if glitter and glitz is not for you, just 20 minutes away is the Canada of a century ago. We'll visit there in our next report. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8, on a special series of one tank trips across southern Ontario. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you right back here tonight at 11. Have a good evening.
destination, southern Ontario, Canada. Tonight, Neil makes a stop in a town just downriver from Niagara Falls, a place where only a few miles make a lot of difference. When you look down the sleepy main street of this quaint village, Niagara-on-the-Lake, it's hard to believe that you're only 20 minutes from the flash and bustle of Niagara Falls. No neon computerized signs that scream at you here, just simple hand-painted walls that, like their businesses, have stood the test of time. Specialty shops that handle only one product, like Greaves Jams and Marmalades, since 1927. We start with the, what's this, the ginger marmalade. We have three fruit marmalade, lime, lemon. Uh, we make uh, the Seville orange, uh, orange lemon, which is the original uh, recipe that started the company in 1927. Over at the Niagara Bakery, a town fixture for a half century and more, even a rainy day doesn't keep the baker from his dough-needing chores. Local residents expect their bread fresh and hot each day. This town's British heritage is worn proudly. You see it in the buildings and in the people. Just stop in at the buttery and ask, what time is tea? From two until five. Two until five. Now, we're not particularly sticky about it in the winter. because Sometimes people want it later or earlier. And in the summer, we stick to the hours because um, it's sort of a tricky little thing to do. Margaret, who was born and raised in England, says many Americans come in and request a high tea, which in England is a sort of combined heavy dinner and tea. What she thinks they really want is this. This is afternoon tea, and this is just uh, composed usually of scones and little sandwiches. The scones here, and little sandwiches, and um, little small cakes. They'd be very small. And, and of course, the tea. And Elegance is the only way to describe some of the overnight lodgings here in Niagara on the Lake. This is Queen's Landing Inn, the newest in the village. In fact, it had only been open one month when we visited. Each bedroom has canopied beds and a real wood-burning fireplace. And some of the private bathrooms have whirlpool baths. But this is something that also sets Niagara on the lake apart from other quaint villages. This is the internationally acclaimed Shaw Festival. Today, three theaters in town annually present the famed Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw's works, as well as other writers, both Canadian and American, in a summer-long festival of theater. However, if small villages are even too big for you, in our next report, we'll head north to show you one of the most romantic hideaways in Ontario, a tiny inn hidden away in a century-old gristmill. The only sound you'll hear is the rush of water below your window. I hope you'll join me as we continue our special series of one tank trips across southern Ontario. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And if you would like a free copy of Neil's all new Volume 9 One Tank Trip book, just send a self addressed business sized envelope with two 25 cent stamps on it to One Tank Trips, P.O. Box 6779, Cleveland, Ohio 44101. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Have a good evening and go Cavs, please. Good head for Canada, according to the Auto Club. All this week, our traveling man Neil Zerker is driving across southern Ontario, looking at what there is to see and do. And tonight, Neil visits the tiny town of Alora, Canada. Here's Neil in a one-tank trip. Something to bear in mind while driving across these miles and miles of open space in Canada, those speed signs along the road are in kilometers, not miles per hour. That means that 80 kilometers translates to 50 miles per hour. So keep your eye on your speedometer and take your time. Speaking of time, let's make a stop here in Kitchener, Ontario at the Colonial Times Clock Company. They offer a free look at how six men hand assemble these beautiful giant clocks by using modern tools work a lot faster than you might think in building each one. By the time we get the chime rods on, and, and we would average about 12, you know, hours, like if you take the machine work, the, the, the assembly, the finishing. And Some of the finished clocks sell for nearly $2,000 and up, 
but they also sell kits that you can assemble yourself for far less. You know those European-looking streets in the Canadian tourist commercials? They really do exist. We found one here in Elora, Canada. This tiny village of 1,200 seems to be the ideal place for a getaway. Mill Street is a place where you can find all kinds of artwork, gifts from around the world, and antiques, like the Eola Antique Shop, operated by Jackie Maidlow, who was one of the first business people to recognize the potential of Elora. She says the town wouldn't have the charm, nor the business it has today, if it hadn't been for one group of people. Women who, one woman lost her husband died, another one was separated, and she bought the building I'm in right there. And then she phoned friends of hers in Toronto, and they began a little tea room just down the street here at the Desert Rose. And that's how it all started. That's how it all started. But the real gem here in Elora is the Elora Mill Inn, a grist mill that sits at the joining of two rivers. Rushing waters still drive the turbines beneath the mill, creating the electricity used by the inn and much of the village. The dining room on the first floor offers gourmet dining specializing in poultry and fish dishes, all well prepared and reasonably priced. The other floors are taken up with bedrooms, each different in size and decoration, each with a private bath and a view of the river and gorge. Operators of the inn admit they seem to be one of Canada's best kept secrets. But, so it would seem, in, in fact it's surprising sometimes, we are actually well known um, throughout the world and yet occasionally someone will drive in even from Kitchener and say, wow, I didn't know you were here. Admittedly, there is not much nightlife here in Elora, but if you're looking for a place where the moonlight is unobstructed by street lights and where the music of two rivers under your window sings you to sleep, the Elora Mill Inn is definitely for you. In our next segment, we head for Georgian Bay and get surprised by a springtime snow. We'll climb Blue Mountain and spend the night in a bed and breakfast in a bed once owned by the King of England. I hope you'll join me as we continue our special series of one tank trips across southern Ontario. I'm Neil Zucker, News Center 8. If you'd like a free copy of Neil's all-new Volume 9 One Tank Trip book, just send a self-addressed, business-sized envelope with two 25-cent stamps on it to One Tank Trips, P.O. Box 6779, Cleveland 44101. And that's our News at 6, the CBS Evening News with Dan Rathers. Now Wondered where Canadians go for their holiday? Here's Neil with the answer on a One Tank Trip. We already know that the favorite destination of most Northeast Ohioans in the summertime is Canada. But it occurred to me, where do Canadians go to get away? Well, the answer is, they also go north, to the Georgian Bay area. We arrived on the heels of a freak spring snowstorm. This is the Blue Mountain that overlooks Collingwood in Wasaga Beach, Canada. From up here, you can see nearly 40 miles in every direction. Collingwood is also home to the famed Blue Mountain Pottery Company. Their factory and outlet stores are both open to the public. Here you can watch the various stages of the collectible figures as they are molded from the mountain clay. Over 700,000 people passed through this factory last year, and collectors of the Blue Mountain pottery are everywhere. We have collectors all over the world, uh, probably to the tune of receiving a letter once a week from various parts of the world. We have a, a collector's club in Australia and New Zealand both. At the factory, you can buy factory seconds at a savings of 30%. Fame comedian W.C. Field said, there's a sucker born every minute. He might have been talking about the candy factory here in Collingwood, and the suckers we're talking about are these huge lollipops that are sold in amusement parks here and abroad. A sucker to last a lifetime. This dandy weighs in at five pounds. The business of making lollipops is a complicated one, and you're invited to watch each day as the candy makers use a process that has changed little in the last hundred years, stretching and putting air into the molten sugar to give the candy its color and flavor. Collingwood has a lot of turn-of-the-century charm, from its downtown to the great mansions that line its streets, home like Beald House, which has been converted to a 14-room inn that offers both bed and breakfast. Each room has been decorated differently, from this one with a wood-burning fireplace and a bearskin rug, to this one that features a bed that once belonged to the former King of England, the Duke of Windsor. 
Many of the rooms have private baths. Aside from spending a night in this grand old house, there is also a treat at breakfast, where a cook from scratch five course meal awaits you. We feel that the consumer that's coming to us can choose between having a light breakfast or going all the way to an Eggs Benedict cereal, croissants, blueberry muffins, whatever she feels like she can have in this house. They offer a package plan for two for the summer that includes four nights at the inn, a dinner for two, and of course their big breakfast each day. Not a bad value at $225 total cost. Wasaga Beach is where Canadians play in the summertime. It's the kind of place you don't have to worry about crowding or someone stepping on you while sunbathing. We have 14 kilometers or 9 miles of beach, uh, supposedly the largest beach, longest beach in Canada, North America, and some people claim even the world. Couple this with some great fishing, both lake and river, and some historical attractions, and you understand why Canadians head north in the summer. In our next report, we wrap up our tour of Ontario with a visit to the Broadway of Canada, Toronto. We'll see what's new and what's out of this world even for Toronto as we wind up a special series of one tank trips across southern Ontario. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. If you'd like a free copy of Neil's all-new Volume 9 One Tank Trip book, just send a self-addressed business-sized envelope with two 25-cent stamps on it to One Tank Trip donation of Ohioans in the summer. And tonight, Neil winds up his Canadian visit with a stop in Toronto and a trip that is truly out of this world. When we northern Ohioans leave Ohio during the summer, the majority of us head here. This is our number one summertime destination, Toronto, Canada. This is truly an international city. Just look around. People from all over the world come here to visit and to live, adding their own special touch to the mix that is Toronto. The Sky Dome, that magnificent new dome stadium and hotel, is the newest addition to the city's tourist trail. Even the outside of the building offers some interesting surprises to those that take the time to look up. This one's a little hard to explain. That church over there is Toronto's newest attraction, but it isn't really a church. And the wedding that takes place there, well, it isn't real either. So bring along your home video camera and most importantly, your sense of humor, because we're on our way into Tony and Tina's wedding. Have you ever been to a wedding where just about everything went wrong? Well, that's the premise here as actors stage the wildest, wackiest wedding you've ever attended. It's called environmental theater, and you, the audience, become part of the play. <laughs> You'll meet members of the wedding party. You'll be there for some of the tender moments of the ceremony. Love is a thing that needs to grow. Feed it jelly beans, treat it kind. Oh, the happiness you'll find. It's all when Tony and Tina get married every Wednesday through Sunday. Mission is $50, but that includes an invitation to the wedding dinner. If you're planning to bring the kids along, you might want to stay at the Delta Chelsea Hotel, located in the heart of downtown. Kids stay free in the parents' room, and the hotel offers a busy program for the youngsters so the parents can go enjoy the town. And there's everything from mouser size to sing-alongs to face painting to mural painting, whatever the kids really like to this do. Toronto has so many attractions, but one you won't want to miss, especially if the kids are along, is here at the CN Tower, or rather, beneath the CN Tower. This is where you get your ticket for the Tour of the Universe. Right up the yellow ramp and there'll be someone there to help you and they'll call your flight number which is JVT-205. From the ride down a make a 1,000 foot elevator to the launch site. You are descending into the future at a rate of 23 feet per second. To the laser inoculation, really just a laser light and a squirt of water. You actually believe you're about to make a flight into outer space, especially when the door to the airlock swings open and you enter the spacecraft. The show's about to start and the special effects are incredible. It's a simulated rocket ship ride out of our Earth's atmosphere to explore the universe. And it's so realistically done that Omni Magazine termed it as one of the 10 best rides in North America. Ladies and 
At times, it's a real white knuckle flight. And welcome to outer space. The secret is this, a converted simulator of a 747 jet aircraft that's been made to look like a spacecraft. These hydraulic lifts can create just about any form of motion inside the cabin. And up ahead is the Hillis catapult, which we'll be entering shortly. A few seconds later, we'll be orbiting Jupiter. I'd like to thank you for flying with us today. A tour of the universe, a great way to wind up our tour of southern Ontario. Best of all, it was just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, New Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Have a good weekend. You can learn to fly just six inches off the ground. It's near Sandusky Bay. His destination this week on a one tank trip. It sounds like an angry hornet when the motor starts. It's a hovercraft a sort of cross between an airplane, boat, and motorcycle. You actually fly six inches off the ground, controlling the craft with your body. Shifting your weight side to side on your knees to let the air escape from one side of the craft to the other to control your speed and direction. Lyons owns and operates Norwalk Forklift Sales and Service, located in Clyde, Ohio, where he sells these hovercraft, which are capable of going across land, water, or you name it, at speeds up to 35 miles per hour. And if you think you'd like to try flying one, you can do it rather inexpensively. For $20, you get a half hour of instructions in a class and we take you out and let you fly on a, a bay or the river. If you prefer to leave the flying to someone else, you can do that here at Griffin Flying Service in Sandusky. And for as little as $10, get a view of Sandusky Bay and Cedar Point that you'll never see from the top of a roller coaster or Ferris wheel. Pilot Tom Griffin will point out some of the sights to you. The new hotel, the Sandcastle Suites, is right out on the point of the Cedar Point. It's a beautiful view of the lake. And the disaster transport Cedar Point's new roller coaster, which they completely enclosed. Griffin also offers daily flight service to both Kelly's Island and Peely Island in Canada. By the way, their lunch counter at Griffin Airport is also well known for the quality of their food and the thickness of their milkshakes. Four to five dips of ice cream that makes the milkshake so thick a straw will stand alone. And you nearly need a spoon to eat the shake. <laughs> On this dot of land in Sandusky Bay, in this quiet spot where only the voices of spring birds can be heard, sleep forever a band of brothers. Confederate soldiers who were once imprisoned here on Johnson Island. Although the island is private property, the cemetery can be reached from the mainland by a toll bridge that costs one dollar. The Sandusky Bay area, a mix of history and play, and best of all, it's just a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us, and we hope to see all of you back here tonight at a dark side of the sun. Join us at 11. Well, Shamu learned some new tricks in a city park where you can run a tent for the night. Just two of the stops tonight as Neil Zerker takes to the road in this week's One Tank Trip. It's that time of year again to see what's new at the amusement parks around the area. We dropped in at a rehearsal at SeaWorld and found a sure cure for hot, tired feet as their water skiers prepare for another season. And Shamu is promising some new exciting skills this year, like using his nose to make a speedboat out of his trainer. And take a tip from that youngster in the yellow raincoat especially if you sit close to the tank. 
because the whales are going to make this the wettest season yet. A good rainy day stop or even a nice day stop is here at the Kent State University Museum in Kent. While the emphasis is on fashion down through the years, they even have Queen Victoria's underwear on display. Creative director and curator Shannon Rogers says he's often amused by the reaction of husbands who accompany their wives to the museum. They don't want to see fashion, and the wives are really convinced that they should come in, and suddenly they see, oh, we didn't know it was going to be anything like this. Gee, they got ships and everything in here. Just down the street is a great place to stop for a refreshment. Hank's ice cream and yogurt. They've even won national awards for their homemade ice cream, which incidentally they make fresh every other day, and they'll let you mix the flavors. It's peanut butter, yogurt, or chocolate ice cream. Chocolate chocolate chip ice cream. How is it? It's incredible. <laughs> it is. It's just. It just tastes like a Reese's peanut butter crust. It's really good. I opted for butter pecan, and she was right. It's some of the best ice cream we've found in our travels. If you and the family would like to try camping out without spending a lot of money, then check out the Stowe Parks and Recreation Department's Run a Tent program. For fifteen dollars, you get everything you see here: a tent, two cots, cooler, lantern, even a stove. All you have to do is bring food and blankets. In fact, we'll even set it up for them if they really don't know that much about camping. You can reserve the Rent-A-Camp by calling Stowe City Parks at 688-8238. Aurora, Kent, and Stowe, a close-to-home journey and just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center X. <laughs> and it's good to see that Neil has again resumed his uh, tradition of sharing, bringing back the uh, the goodies. For sharing and caring. This right. is the best ice cream. And again, folks, this is from Hank's Homemade Ice Cream at 1720 East Main Street in Kent. It is delicious, oh, mm, isn't it? Mm, mm, mm. It sure is. Well, that's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather is next. Thank you for sharing your time and ice cream with us, and <laughs> we hope to see you back here tonight at 11. Have a really good evening. amusement park and donning his test pilot duds is our traveling man Neil Zerker as he takes to the sky in this week's one tank trip. It looks innocuous enough sitting there on the ground but that's before the padded bar over your shoulders is snapped into place and that metal bar across your lap is locked. You know that this ride's going to be a bit different. You're lifted 60 feet into the air and the tower starts to rotate. That's when you discover this ride can be as tame as a carousel or with a touch of a joystick, you can turn this cockpit into a rolling, diving, twisting, turning experience and make your stomach send messages that it would have rather stayed on the ground. It's called Flight Command, and is a new breed of ride that lets the passenger determine just how much thrill they want in the ride. It looks like Kings Island has a winner here. One tip, be sure that harness is on tight as possible. Otherwise, you'll end up with bruised shoulders from bouncing all over the cockpit. For you bargain hunters, how about a visit to a feather factory? Actually, Down Light International of Kings Mills is one of the leading manufacturers of down for bedding and clothing sold by some of the biggest names in American department and mail order stores. They offer tours of the plant for free. And here's the good part, have a factory outlet store where you can buy overruns and seconds at considerable savings. Um, we have comforts that start off at $59.95, progress all the way up into very high-end goods that they get into your three and four hundred dollars. But again, those are, those are products that would sell elsewhere for eight hundred to a thousand. Clark says that typical savings are forty to sixty percent at the factory store. If you'd like to try an unusual place to eat, try the Brass Pig in nearby Springboro. The folks here always have eight to ten soups cooking, all homemade. They serve no red meat and nothing that is deep fried. But that doesn't mean that some things aren't high in calories, but they have the answer for that, the pig wand. We just bring our pig wand out and go over it once or twice and it supposedly takes all the calories out, makes the guilt go away and we sell an awful lot of that. Southwest Ohio, a fun place to be, and best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8.
have to eat all that just before you go on that ride. <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about the calories. Or the pig wand. <laughs> That's our news at 6. The CBS Evening News is next. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We hope to see you right back here tonight. Hey, to see the most scenic Whitewater River in Pennsylvania, and he also has a tip on a place to stay that's almost in the clouds. Here's Neil and a one tank trip. The Yonkagini River in Ohio Pile, Pennsylvania has been famous for years for their whitewater raft trips. And with all the rain we've had this spring, the river is high and running fast, making the trips more exciting than ever. You can cover the eight miles of twisting rapids through the Ohio Pile Park in just about four hours. This is still the closest place to Cleveland to experience whitewater rafting. And now there's a new way to enjoy the rugged Yonkagini River without even getting wet. Recently opened is this 11 mile long bike trail that follows the track bed of an abandoned railroad line right along the water's edge. Just about every rafting outfitter along the river now also rents the sturdy mountain bikes, which can be leased for the hour, day, or week, and the trail isn't finished yet. It will eventually connect us with Connellsville, Pennsylvania, flowing north or going north towards Pittsburgh. And there are plans in the future for possibly down into Maryland and D.C. What I like about the trail, beside the beauty that can be seen along the way, is that it's virtually level, only slight hills, so anyone, even an inexperienced biker like myself, can ride it very easily. And even if you can't ride a bike, there are plenty of easily accessible lookouts to enjoy the beauty of Ohio Pile State Park. Only a short distance away is one of Pennsylvania's famous ski resorts, Hidden Valley. While you won't find any snow here in the spring and summer, the resort is open with many things to do. Golf camps are held here on their championship mountaintop golf course, and their clay tennis courts are also used in the summer for instructional camps, with good bargain packages that include both lessons and a stay at one of the plush mountain condos that they rent for the night, week, or month. Southwest Pennsylvania can be easily reached by Turnpike. It's about a four-hour drive from Cleveland. And best of all, it's just a one tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Who was that with Neil? I don't know. We're trying to figure it out. Hmm, that's all of our news at 6. Thank you for sharing your time with us. And stay tuned for the CBS Evening News. Next, we invite you to. down on the farm. Just a couple of stops tonight as our traveling man Neil Zucker sets out on a one tank trip to Lake County. Down this country lane you'll find one of this area's newest and most exciting attractions. This is the Lake Metro Park's new farm park. My son Craig and I stopped off this week to look around. Inside the modern central building that resembles a barn, you'll find high-tech displays to educate you about farming. You can get a close-up look at how animals' life cycle works. But that's not all. There are rides to be had in horse-drawn wagons that take you up on a hillside where you can look back at the park. In the barn, the kids can milk a real cow. No fancy milking machines here. They still do it the old-fashioned way. There are also tractors, both big and little, that the kids can climb and play on. And the best part is that no matter when you visit, things are always changing. No, no day is like the, the day that preceded. There, there are lots of things. You do the same kind of chores in a way. But there, there are new animals born almost every day. And uh, so things like that are constantly changing. There's more to see and do here, like the maize and the hay mow. And there's more to come in the years ahead, including a complete working farm right out of the 1950s. Chicken dinners are also a part of farm life, and here in Metter, we're pleased to learn that Roman's Ford, a Madison restaurant that prepares some of the best buffalo wings in Ohio, has just opened a carryout restaurant where their famous wings are sold. Their quality must be showing they're already selling over a ton of wings a week. Have you ever wanted to take the old family buggy and head out to the drag strip and try this? This is Thompson Dragway in Thompson, Ohio, 
And believe it or not, you can do exactly that, race the family car on Wednesday nights. Any kind of street-driven car or motorcycle, we race for trophies. And do you have to have any special equipment? Everybody has, is required to have a seat belt, good tires on their cars, and uh, a helmet. On Saturday nights, the professionals like these people take over. You may have seen it on television, but in person you get a good idea why they call it Rolling Thunder. Lake and Geauga counties can be easily reached from Cleveland, and best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I bet you thought I was going to race my Metropolitan. I just didn't want to make those other guys look bad. Neil Zerker, News Center 8. And that's our news at 6, the CBS Evening News. cafeteria here in tiny Dunbar, Pennsylvania, will never win any style awards. Most of the tables don't match, and the chairs have seen better days. But that doesn't seem to bother the almost never-ending line of customers who fill this place six days a week. They come here for the price. The Pepsi here cost me a dime. The hamburger, just 19 cents. Now, you might think these are promotional costs, but they aren't. They're everyday prices here at Peachin's Cafeteria in Dunbar, Pennsylvania. And it doesn't stop with hamburgers. The most expensive item on the menu is a plate dinner. Meat, potatoes, vegetable, and roll, all for 79 cents. And it's been that way for quite a while. I think we raised the dinner price 10 cents in 17 years. It started out at 69 cents, and now the dinner is 79 cents. Coffee is still a dime here. And you can buy an ice cream cone for just 20 cents. How do they do it? Volume. Volume. You sell lots of it. Oh, by the way, on Mondays, if you're a senior citizen, the dinner is free. From fairy tale food prices, let's turn to another fixture of this area, Idlewild Park, and its storybook forest, celebrating 35 years of bringing fairy tales to life. Nursery rhymes that become real. A gentle park that seems the perfect setting to bring to life television's Mr. Rogers' neighborhood of make believe. From the moment you climb on that bright red trolley car, find yourself face to face with King Friday the 13th. Ladies and gentlemen, I presume. Correct as usual, King Friday. I... All the imaginary residents of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood are here. Corny, Daniel Tiger, Lady Elaine and her wondrous music museum. The list goes on. And you only need to look at the faces on the children on the trolley to know they feel welcome here and ready to break into song. Oh. <laughs> Dunbar and Ligonier, Pennsylvania are easily reached by Turnpike and are just about four hours from Cleveland. Best of all, it's just a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. trees out there. They just go for miles and miles. You know, I bet there's not another building within miles of this place. Isn't camping a lot of fun? Yeah, but I thought we were supposed to sleep in a tent, not a hotel. Craig makes a good point, but to a lot of people, this is the perfect way to camp out, close to nature, in the middle of thousands of acres of forest, and in an air-conditioned lodge, like here at Salt Fork State Park. You don't have to look very far to find people who consider this camping out. Just take a stroll by the Salt Fork swimming pool on a nice day, and you'll run into campers like Roger Buckholds of Worcester. Yeah, this is a lot nicer than sleeping on the ground if it rains. Roger says he's camped other ways, but this is the ideal way to go. A lodge room, a swimming pool, and a place to stretch out in the sun. He says this is also the ideal place for first-time campers who aren't sure what kind of camping they want to do. They can find it all here. You can come here, then just walk 500 feet, see how the camping is, and you can get a good idea of it. 
whether you want to do it or not. Whether you want to do it or not. You come back in your air-conditioned room and think about it. Right, yeah. These last couple of days, the air-conditioning's been nice. Salt Fork does offer the best of both worlds. Hidden away a half hour's drive from the main road, the lodge sits in splendid isolation amidst thousands of acres of forest and lake. Craig and I went exploring. The fudge shop here at the lodge is almost legendary, and few visitors can leave without trying at least a small piece. Looks good to me. Wrap it up. There is also the Salt Fork gift shop in the lodge, a place to buy souvenirs, as well as those things you forgot to pack. And if you swim, well, the weather doesn't matter. They have both an outside and an inside heated pool that is open year round. And there are other things to do, golf and tennis. All right. Volleyball. Don't worry if you don't have a team. There seems to always be a pickup game going on. For those that like a less strenuous sport, there is shuffleboard courts, both outside and inside. And when it comes to eating, you don't have to worry about mosquitoes inside this huge dining room at Salt Fork Lodge with its view of the surrounding forest and hills. So what does this cost to camp out at Salt Fork Lodge? Well, our guest rooms now during the summertime are $68 a night for one person in a room, plus your tax, of course, and then $82 for two people in a room. Didn't you bring the kids along? What the, what's it called? Now that's even better. That's still just 82 plus tax a night because children 18 and under stay free with us. I should point out that Salt Fork is the most expensive state park lodge in Ohio. There are six other lodges and other parks that offer similar accommodations at slightly lower costs. If you're interested, make reservations early because they're usually booked far ahead on weekends. Just call 1-800-AT-A-PARK for more information. For our next stop, Craig and I will take to the water for a nautical camping trip aboard a houseboat. I hope you'll join us as we learn about camping on a special series of one tank trips. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. It's an odd experience to sleep on the water in a houseboat. My son, Craig, and I had the feeling while cruising the huge lake at Salt Fork State Park that we were all alone, quiet only broken by the buzz of our motor and the slap of water against our bow. It doesn't take much knowledge to operate a houseboat. If you can drive a car, you can probably handle this. Just remember it has no brakes. It doesn't move as fast as some of the other boats on the lake. With its shallow draft, the houseboat can pull up to the shore just about anywhere in the lake. A nice feature when you find a secluded cove and want to do some practicing where your only critics are the fish. In case you're wondering while you're cruising the lake what happens if the motor stalls and won't start, not to worry, says marina officials. There is adequate safety equipment on board, as well as distress signals. We have 3,000 acres of lake here, so you've got quite a ways to go, and you can, you can really explore a lot, but um, there's really nowhere that you can go that you're isolated so much that somebody wouldn't see you. And when you camp on a houseboat, you don't have to walk to the lake to fish. The lake is right at your front door, perfect for an afternoon of fishing, or in my case, an afternoon of unsnarling a bulky fishing reel. It's always a good idea to bring along some other food, just in case the fish aren't biting. The houseboat has a complete kitchen. All you have to bring along is your food and the utensils to cook with. You'll also have to furnish your own bedding, but there's lots of room to sleep. It has uh, the table that turns into a bed for two. It has a couch, which is very comfortable in the daytime, and then turns into a bed in the evening. And um, we had a set, of, a set of bunk beds. If you think houseboat camping is for you, be prepared to spend about $100 a day for a week's rental and a bit more if you want it for only a three-day period, the shortest time that they rent it in the summertime. If you'd like to try some other types of boats while you're here, the marina also rents all kinds of watercraft like these sporty wave runners. Or you can take a narrated tour of the lake on this large party boat. Or paddle around in one of these little pedal boats where you supply the power. 
In our next report, Craig and I move into a rustic cabin and try to find some ways of beating cabin fever as we continue to learn about camping out on a special series of one tank trips. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. that you can camp out in come in all sizes and shapes. Yeah. My son Craig and I opted for this one with running water and electricity, but no telephone, radio, or television. By the first evening, we noticed the stillness. Kind of quiet here at night, isn't it, Craig? Yeah. We found ourselves doing a lot of reading. Craig got so bored, he even began to read newspaper advertisements. Games, we found, helped pass the evening. This is called five-card draw poker. Don't tell your mother I taught you to play this. Okay. The cabins are fairly big, consisting of a living room, kitchen, two bedrooms, and a bathroom with shower. There is also a large screened-in porch, perfect for a checker game on rainy days. But it wasn't raining this morning, and so Craig and I hiked over to the lodge and rented two bikes, and set out to discover some of the trails that surround Punderson State Park. Eventually, we pedaled over to the marina, where for $15, we rented a motorized fishing boat for two hours and set out to discover whether the fish at Punderson were biting better than at Salt Fork. They weren't. Sometimes the best way to see some of our state parks is on foot. They have some great views on this nature trail that winds along the lake here at Punderson. It was on the way back to our cabin that we noticed all the activity next door and met one of our neighbors, Richard Geisel of Dayton, who was a veteran camper in both tents and cabins. He says he likes cabins for one very important reason. Well, you walk in the bathroom, you can take a shower. In a rustic camp, you got a sponge off inside of the tent and you get what you can. Fifteen members of Geisel's family had actually rented two cabins and were holding a family reunion. Geisel says if you're thinking of camping and bringing along youngsters, there are some important things to pack. You have two boxes you bring. One is all adult games and the other one is all kids games. And we bring crayons and color and things like this. He also says modern cabins like these are excellent for beginning campers because they have just enough rustic charm to make you believe you're roughing it and enough conveniences to make the experience tolerable. It's like getting away from the world back to the world that used to be. If you think a cabin would be the way you'd like to camp out, be prepared to pay from $310 to $380 a week here at Punderson State Park. Other parks are lower and higher in price. All the cabins come with running water, bathrooms, electricity, dishes, and bedding. Just bring your food and move in. By the way, some of the cabins at Punderson are equipped for handicapped access. In our next report, Craig and I leave the little metropolitan at home and hit the road in an RV to see what it's like to camp out with all the comforts of home just behind the steering wheel. All part of our special series about camping on a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. My son Craig and I are going camping today in an RV, a recreational vehicle that has everything, including a kitchen sink. Sandy's RV sales here in Lorraine is one of the few places you can still rent an RV. Whether you have experience camping or it's the very first time, owner Paul Sandiford says if you can drive a car, you can handle an RV. We walk them out to the unit. We do a walk around inside and outside, which takes approximately 45 minutes, explain everything. There are pamphlets inside if they should forget. We always tell them that if they ever stop and ask any fellow camper or motorhome owner, they're all basically the same and they'll give them the information they need. I must admit, as I pulled into traffic for the first time, I was a bit apprehensive. But remembering Paul Sandifor's advice to use my side mirrors as a gauge, wherever they fit, the camper also fits, 
I soon started gaining confidence as I started the trip towards Punderson State Park. Craig particularly enjoyed the RV because of the space inside and the freedom to move around that it offered him on the hour-long trip. Arriving at the park, it was just a matter of backing the RV into our campsite and simply plugging in the electrical outlet. State campgrounds offer no water or sewage hookups, so you must make do with what you have on board. And that means reminding everyone on board to use water sparingly. Hey, Craig, are you done in the shower yet? Yeah. Are you done? Yeah. All right, come on out. Sit down. <laughs> you get dry? Yeah. Okay. What do you want for breakfast? While there is a gas stove and an oven in the RV, I decided to cook outside to keep the dishwashing to a minimum. In a campground like this, you'll find RVs sitting next to all varieties of tents. You'll discover what Paul Sandiford said about other campers helping is very true. A bulky refrigerator sent us visiting the next campsite, and we met Robert and Mabel Johnson of Solon, who have been camping for over 30 years. They say everyone makes mistakes when they first start camping. We've had, we've had it on uh, the tent and everything on top of the car, and we didn't tie it down right, and it's scattered all over the road. They use an RV now, and their advice to anyone else considering buying one is to decide how you're going to use it. The, the motor, if it's, if it's big enough so that it'll carry, we're, we're looking at 10,000 pounds here. Rent an RV. It may cost you three, $400 for a week, but then you'd find out if you liked it or not. And that was advice we heard over and over from other campers. Rent before you buy. Since RVs cost from tens of thousands to the hundreds of thousands of dollars, Sandy's RVs, where we got this unit, the cost was $395 for the week, plus 16 cents a mile. And you must also provide a rider on your auto insurance policy for the value of the camper, and be ready to put down a $300 refundable deposit. Relatively speaking, an inexpensive way to try an exciting way to see the country. In our next report, Craig and I pitch a tent as we get down to the real basics of camping out, all part of a one-tank trip. I'm Neil Zerker, News Center 8. Pretty inexperienced at camping, like I am, and tenting, and your tent looks kind of like this one after you set it up, well, you might want to consider a couple of alternatives. This is one alternative. It's called Rent-A-Camp, and it can mainly be found in many state parks in Ohio and in at least one city park. For a modest fee, you get a complete campsite with a big tent, all set up and ready to go. All you have to do is bring along your food and blankets. It's a painless way to see if you like camping without the big costs of buying things like a tent. It's about a $390 tent. So that's quite an investment for a family that maybe isn't sure they like camping. Uh, so for paying our fee for the rent of camp, which is seven, $16 a night, uh, they get the site and they get the rental of the equipment. But how do you know if you really would like to camp out? For the answer to that one, we went in search of some veteran tent campers, people who think nothing of pitching a pup tent, rain or shine, and love every minute of it. How do you know if you are ready to camp out? I'd say to use the metro parks for a picnic, you know, to try that, uh, you know, family picnic type situation, and just, you know, for a couple hours or half a day or whatever, and then see if they like the outdoors and then move on from there. Frank, his wife and friends have been backpacking and tent camping for years say while it's the most inexpensive way to camp out, there are other reasons. The, the tent, I feel, is more closer to nature and more natural and, and uh, that, that sort of situation. It's, it's not as, uh, as materialistic, really. And you know they have a point. There is something about the taste of a fresh cooked steak and roasted corn done out of doors. It takes on a flavor you can't find in your kitchen or a restaurant. Mm, good corn. And as night falls, the building of the campfire is a special moment, a time of marshmallows and simple traditions. 
the sharing of some warm fun from one generation to another. Okay, Craig, to roast a good marshmallow, you don't burn it. You just get it nice and brown. But whether it be the crackle of a campfire or the call of a cricket at night that you listen to from a tent, cabin, or lodge, there is a certain magic to a camping trip. This has really been fun. Good night, Craig. Good night, Dad. And to all of you, happy camping. Neil Zerker, News Center 8.